Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at Farron OS, an Ubuntu-based Linux distribution running KDE Plasma. And not only does it run KDE Plasma, but it has a bunch of things added to it to make the experience better for a new user, including layouts, wonderful pre-made theming, and much more that we will be going into in this video. Now, before we deep dive into Farron OS, we're going to highlight some of the changes in the July 2021 snapshot. And the most apparent thing is those layouts. All the layouts in Farron OS have their own unique themes with both light and dark variants. Now, most of the layouts are the same as before, but there is one new layout which turns KDE Plasma into a Windows 11 lookalike, and that new layout is called Doors. Additionally, if you're somebody who uses Chinese, Japanese, or Korean keyboard layouts, complex inputs are now automatically installed within the live session and post-installation with more layouts to come. Accent colors within the system have been slightly toned down to be a little less vibrant to give the system an overall better look and feel. Additionally, this version of Farron OS will ship with KDE Plasma 5.22, so you'll have like the quick settings page and any other improvements that came along with the new version of KDE Plasma. And another thing that you'll notice as we go through the system is all the corners are now officially rounded out of the gate, and those rounded corners will be system-wide. So with all that said, let's go ahead, dive onto the system, and take a deeper look at some of the things we talked about, as well as the system overall. All right, so we are now booted into Farron OS. I already went through the installation process. It's not too different than any other Calamaris installation. Uh, to set up the user profile and all that, you do that after the installation on your first boot. But the first thing you're welcomed with is this tour. And this is pretty nice. We're gonna go ahead and run through it real quick. So first we can see that it detected that we are in a virtual machine. So it gives you some nice buttons to go ahead and click if you want to install those drivers. If you go next, it has a little option. So if you use their file transfer tool, you could go ahead and open that up or learn how to use it. If we go next, it has the option for third-party codecs, so just click a button and it'll go ahead and install all of that. I'm fairly certain it's just the Ubuntu Restricted Extras, which is something that you probably want to install. So we're going to skip that for now, go next, and then we have the desktop mode. You could either have it in the Farron OS default, which is what we see now, or we could go with tablet mode. Uh, for now, we're on a desktop, so I'm gonna go next. And then here, it's gonna run through a little tutorial about using the desktop, the applications menu, go ahead and click next, window management, next, system tray, it talks about where that is, next, and desktop search, which we can access by hitting Alt F2. And you can see that brings up, I believe this is KRunner, and you can use this to search basically anything on your system. So we're gonna go next. You get more applications and open the Farron OS store, which we will open in just a little bit. Let's go next, and here we have our theme mode. So by default, the theme is a mixture between light and dark. You can see some of the system UI components are following the dark theme, while the windows are following the light theme. But you could switch to purely light theme or purely dark theme. For this, we're gonna keep it at the default. Let's go next, and here we have those accent colors we talked about. So the default selected one is blue, but you could switch it up to really whatever one you want. I'm gonna keep it at the default for now. And being that this is a KDE Plasma experience, it does give you a little prompt so you could go ahead and configure KDE Connect, linking up your smartphone to it. And they, it's pretty cool that there's an option to get it on F-Droid as well, which is full of free and open source app Android applications. So let's go next. We have an option to configure the night color. We'll go next for now, and we are all done. So let's go ahead and enjoy our system. Now on the desktop, some of the differences that we'll notice right away is one, the icons are centered while our menu is over here. We have an option over here to send feedback to the developer, and our time is up here instead of down there. And if we click this down, this is where all of our notifications are. Now this is the default layout. What I'm gonna do now is show you the different layouts and how to change them. So let's go down and go over to our system settings, open that up, and this is gonna be under desktop and desktop layout. Now when you switch to these layouts, it's not gonna automatically uh, change the theming. That's something you're gonna have to do separately. Um, the global themes here match up with the desktop layouts. So for example, human right here is the uh, Unity theme. So if I wanted that, I would select human, click apply, and then you can see this bar pop out and it's following that Unity theme. If I click right here, it will bring up a system menu. If I click right here, it'll bring up our application menu and all that. 
But from here, you're going to want to go over to global theme and down here under human, which is their unity layout, you have the light and dark. So for example, if I switched it to their light theme, it will now properly follow that. Or we could go over to the dark, apply that, and then you can see it changes even the internal window layouts and all that. Now if we go back over to desktop layout, classical is going to be our Redmond theme. So if I go ahead, apply that, it's going to give us a real old school vibe here. You're going to want to go over to global theme and apply classical. And this will give us that kind of old school, like Windows 98 grays and all that. Uh, if we go back over to desktop layout and select Mac and cheese, this kind of gives us more of a Mac OS X feel. And we're going to want to go over to global theme and then select the proper theme for that. So we have Mac and cheese light and Mac and cheese dark. Let's say we want a dark, for example, you can now see down here, we have our dock with all of our applications. If I click on this, it brings up the launcher with our favorites, our applications and some categories for those applications. If I click up here on this little fair and use switcher thing, it gives us options to leave, suspend, lock screen, new session, system monitor, things like that. But what is really cool is the new doors layout. So if I go over, first I'm gonna select the coloring. So that's already applied. Let's go doors dark. And then go over to our desktop layout and select doors, hit apply. And this is gonna be that Windows 11 layout. So we're gonna go ahead and close. Actually, let's minimize this for now. And now you can see that we have the centered taskbar right here, but our, our application menu is right here. So if we open that up, you can see this is a very similar to that Windows 11 start menu. So we have all of our pinned applications here, our most recent zero, because I haven't really opened anything yet. And then we have our user stuff here and some other options to shut down, restart and go to settings. But it's really cool if I click this little search thing, it doesn't look exactly like Windows, but it does open up that KDE Plasma search. And then they do have the uh, workspace switcher here. So if I tap on that, you can see my available workspaces to go ahead and choose from. So that is super cool. Additionally, if I go ahead and open this up, this was a little thing that the developer added to kind of match it as well. Right here, we have our show desktop. It's this little button right here. You can see if I tap on that or hover over it, all the icons go away or the windows. And if I hit it again, they come back. So just really nice attention to detail throughout the system. If we go down, we can see that they're using the Inspire Dark icon set. And one thing that's kind of worth mentioning, if I go over to background services, one thing that's disabled by default is K-Screen. Uh, there's currently a bug with K-Screen and VirtualBox that doesn't allow you to really change the resolution. So this is disabled by default, which is really nice, especially for somebody like me, who is commonly in virtual environments. That's nice that he went ahead and did that. So let's go ahead and close this out and check out some of our pre-installed applications. So if I go over here to all apps, it gives us an alphabetical list of all the applications on the system. You have some things that you'd expect, Arc, Calculator, uh, Cheese, Disks. Uh, they have GNOME Disks by default, which is a really good move because out of all the GNOME applications, GNOME Disks does work significantly better than the uh, KDE Partition Manager, in my opinion. Uh, if we go back to all apps, you have the donate to Farron OS. That's a new option as well. And if you don't want this little link in your system, that's easy to get rid of. Uh, we have driver manager, emoji selector files. One thing that's kind of an interesting decision is this isn't dolphin. If we go over here, help about Nemo is the default file manager within Farron OS. And I mean, ne Nemo is a pretty good file manager. It's not too bad of an option. Uh, if we go to all applications, we have Geary. K is in here by default. You have a couple different KDE things. Krita is installed by default, so that's pretty cool. You have Lati Doc, all the LibreOffice stuff. Uh, we have Maps, which is another GNOME utility. Spectacle Store, System Maintenance. You have Time Shift, Theme Customizer, Update. They used Vivality as the default web browser, so that's another interesting choice. You have VLC, which isn't my favorite. If I was in charge, I would switch that out for something like MPV. And then we have links to our welcome screen web browser manager, which is another pretty cool utility. So here you could go ahead and actually select what web browsers you want to use. So you can just quickly install Google Chrome, Chromium, Firefox, whatever you want. Speaking of that store, this is what their uh, Farron store looks like. Watch if we go over to this little gear, go to about, you can see some information on their little store. And then they have a bunch of different applications and categories and all that. It's, it's your typical Linux style store. So go ahead and close that out. Now, one thing I wanna do before we wrap this up is let's open up a terminal. The uh, default is the console. 
which is the KDE Plasma default. So let's go ahead and zoom on in. Let's see if NeoFetch is installed. It is not. So being that this is an Ubuntu based distribution, we're gonna wanna go sudo apt install NeoFetch. And now that it's done, we could go input that again. And we can see they have their own little tech start and we are running Farin OS 64 bit version. And we can see that they're running the 5.8 kernel out of the gate. There are 2,226 packages installed, so quite a few different packages out of the gate, this including what I just added, NeoFetch and its dependencies. Uh, we're running Bash version 5 with Plasma K when the theme currently is the Doors Dark. And we can see here that I'm using almost 1,200 megabytes of RAM out of the gate, so the RAM utilization is pretty high. Let's go ahead and open up our uh, system monitor real quick just to see kind of how it's running. Uh, if I go over here, we are using that. Okay, so now we're using 5.1 gigabytes. So it is pretty heavy on the resource consumption, but the theming and all that that I'm using is pretty nice looking. So it's gonna use a little bit more than expected. CPU utilization is still pretty low, so that is a good thing. So that basically concludes our overlook of Farin OS. It is a wonderful Ubuntu-based Linux distribution that gives you that KDE Plasma experience with a bunch of extra layout options to really get the look you're going for without having to work too hard at it. Luckily, Dominique, the developer of this, has already done a lot of that work for you. And speaking of, Farin is just now taking donations for the first time in the six years that this project has been around. So if you want to, you can either donate through this or go over to their website to donate. So maybe they could get rid of that uh, dot Weebly in their domain name. <laughs> so with all that said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. There'll be a link to download this and check out their website in the description if you are interested. With all that said, if you like this video, give it a like. If you like this content, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Uh, yeah, have a beautiful day and goodbye.